Good morning and welcome to Friends and Family Church. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. 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 When darkness tries to roll over my bones, and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. And brokenness and pain is all I know. Oh, I won't be shaken. Oh, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Well, shame no longer has a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. Oh, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, I am standing on the rock. I am standing in your love. Oh, I am standing on the rock. My firm foundation, my firm foundation. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your everything that distracts you from being a, a true servant of God, let that just become a shadow in the light of who he is. Hallelujah. Good morning to you. We're going to open with a scripture today, and I would like to take you to the book of Ephesians, if I would, for an opening scripture. 
We will use this scripture again later in my sermon. It's part of uh, the thought for today, so we can come back to it, Ashley, so you can kind of hang on to it. I think I can do better this morning without these Sundays. It's just different. In the fourth chapter of Ephesians, in the very first verse, it reads like this. I, there's a comma there. That means, okay? Let's just put it in perspective. Put your name right there where the word I is. I, therefore, Paul's talking about himself, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you walk worthy of the calling with, with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope in your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Praise you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you have spiritually just lifted your hands yes. and wrapped your arms around your people. And you have drawn them close when they are discouraged or despondent, yes. Yes. whatever their situation may be. And you've drawn them in and tell them that you yes. will never leave them and never forsake them. And they can always trust in you. And I thank you today that this scripture lets us know that it's all Everything is in yes. you. Yes. Our hope, our, our future, our everything about us, Lord, it's in you. And we rest it there. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for that that you will do today in this service, in song and in word, that you would quicken us, Lord, into thinking and knowing without any doubt, any reservations, that we would we would not fear in any way, but we would walk in the in the strength and the faith of who you are within us. And I thank you now, Lord, that we have been resurrected with that same spirit that we might feel that quickening power even now, today, this moment. We thank you for the things you've already done as we prayed at the beginning of the service and, and we've opened, Lord, an uh, opportunity to, to lay hands on some of those that need help. And Lord, some of those at home yes. today may be in that same situation said, I need a, a promise of a future. I need a hope. We thank you, Lord, for all of those that you're touching. We think of yes, Jerry yes. Mace this morning at the Church of God, Lord, that's suffering with, with, uh, with cancer and, and the, the, the prognosis, according to doctors, doesn't look good. We lift him up, Lord, and we, we lay him at your feet that you would yes, minister Lord. to yes, him Lord. in a strong and, and, and a way that the family would know that you're yes, working Lord. a mighty work on his behalf. I thank you for that that you're going to do today, Lord, within our service that that you're going to do within every heart, those yes. that are at home and those that are here in the congregation. Yes. We just uh, submit everything unto you, Lord. I thank you today for our men and women in uniform around the world fighting for freedom. Protect them. Help them, Lord. Settle the issues, Lord, of, of, of not placing something strong on this life, but preparing for that life with you forever. And every day and every moment, Lord, they can they can rest in the, in the hope of glory within you, whether they live or whether they die. Paul said to, to live was Christ, but to die was gain. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, today that you would settle all of those thoughts within every every yes. person that claims yes. Christianity today. Yes. I thank you for our caregivers and first responders and those that are in homes and those that are in hospitals and nursing homes or in the fire Praise department or police department. Protect and help and encourage them all, Lord. Those are difficult jobs, and, and we trust them to you. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for every church this day throughout the world that is lifting up your banner, even on different time schedules. Yes. That they are, they are enjoying, Lord, the presence of who you are. I thank you now that you would minister to every one of them by your Holy Spirit and touch them, and, and that we would rejoice this day. Yes. And there would be continuous yes. praise unto the, the heavens and themselves for every moment of this day. And I thank you, Lord, for that. I ask, Lord Jesus, you be with every missionary that's on the front field, whether yes. they're here in the United States or distant, Lord, they're working as a in a mission-type uh, uh, setting. I pray that you provide, bless, and make us sensitive in how to help and who to help, Lord. And 
we thank you, Lord, for Zima that we took up some money that we, we sent to them this past Monday night to help with the recovery of those churches and those, those uh, different people that are in south uh, part of Florida, Lord, around uh, all these places that were destroyed. And you know the names of every town, every city. There's just too many. And I pray that you help them, Lord, and, and comfort those who have lost family. The Lord, as we took the offering up and sent it out, we thank you that you place your blessing upon it. That same blessing, Lord, we send out today on all that you do here in yes, this service. Yes, that your blessing, Lord, would be upon it. Your anointing would be upon it. As we lay our lives down and we take up the life that I now live, I live through the faith in the Son of God. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. And we thank you for your congregation here and those that are at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Praise God, Johnny. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The, um, the song that we opened with is called Stand in Your Love. Um, that one uh, we opened with today because it's kind of a springboard of, of where the Lord has taken us for today. And uh, so back when Pastor Donnie was walking through his uh, cancer thing, that song ministered to him, and that song is a song that, that really, you know, just sort of like we heard Michelle and her song, Goodness of God, that, that song ministered to, to Pastor Donnie. So, you know, it, we, we wanted to use that as a springboard to say we appreciate our pastors, Pastor Donnie and Pastor Kim. And so right now, we'd just like for you both to go stand right down there. And pastor, just 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 settle down. It's okay. Don't worry. We want to hear you preach. You know, so, but uh, yeah. if anyone else would like to come up, we're going to pray over Pastor and Kim right now. Father, right now we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you and we praise you for this couple that is standing before us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the wisdom that these two have led us in. And Father, we just ask now that you would touch them and touch them mightily. Father, in their yes. quiet times, minister them, taking them deeper and deeper and deeper in you, Lord. The mysteries, let them be revealed to them so that they can teach us your ways. Father, we thank you and we appreciate everything that they have done for us. They have been a great example for us. And we just give you the praise and the glory for them right now in Jesus' name. Father, we place a hedge of protection around them right now. And we ask that you would block every, every um, missile that comes across to them, that tries to put them down. Father, they need to be lifted up so that they can lift us up. And we just thank you and we praise you for your work that you are doing and accomplishing here at Friends and Family. Lord, we are looking for great things to be accomplished this next year. Father, begin whispering what you want them to do, how we need to get this church up and running the way you want it to be run, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. And also, we'll be having we'll be having lunch, um, and everyone's invited to come. And Kim, you're not allowed to set up or clean up today. <laughs> anyway, but we honor you today. And we love you. Thank you so much. That's what I forgot to say. But that <laughs>
Okay. Take take your place, sir. All right. I want to I want to share a scripture with you guys. It's First uh, Peter chapter five, beginning with verse two. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's First uh, Peter five. Starting with verse 2, it says, Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Hallelujah. So I just want to uh, speak encouragement to the two of you. Okay. Um, And as we all know, there's going to be more stuff down the road for the body of Christ. All right. And the body of Christ breaks down into cells, right? Each is made up of a whole lot of cells, and we're one of those cells. So that means if the body of Christ is going to be under attack, we're going to be under attack. And when, when the enemy comes in and begins to try and do his thing, where's he get, if he can take out the leader, if he can take out the, 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 our, our pastors, then what happens? You know, and so that's, that's the thing that we just want to encourage you, that we know, we know that you guys are walking ahead of us, okay? So you're going you're gonna to take those shots before they can get through to us. But at, at the same time, we're surrounding you with the power of the presence of God, just, just sending it forth to you guys continually and knowing that God is faithful to honor his word. Always faithful. Always faithful. So you guys be encouraged and thank you is not enough. We appreciate you is not enough. It goes way beyond all of that because we look and see, you know, the times that, that you come in and, yeah, I'm good, uh, sort of, kind of, maybe. <laughs> not my best day, but, I mean, but knowing that you guys have got a lot of stuff going on. But I told Pastor yesterday, you know, and I'm going to work at it really hard, and I know John has been working at it really hard and everything as well. And you don't have to worry about this stuff. If you want to direct us somewhere and say, take a look at this, and this is what I might think, good. We'll, we'll go with that. But you don't come over here and do it. You be over there praying. You be going out and ministering to people that the Lord leads you to. You study. You do that stuff and take care of your cows and everything else in the process. But, but you do that stuff. That when it comes to friends and family church, you guys focus on what God has led you to be, and that's the pastors of this church. So be always just be being filled and being refilled and everything else. And and let us take care of that other stuff because we don't want you weary in well doing. And that that caused weariness in well doing. So uh, so okay. So we're we're gonna you know we're gonna and if 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 all of a sudden you you find the the weeds and the grass like six feet high, then come up to us and say you told me that, <laughs> that you were gonna take care of this and I believed you and I let you <laughs> now get on the stick, okay? All right. Does anybody else does anybody else want to share anything? How many of you love our pastors? All right, come on, give them a shout. Say, thank you, Lord, for our pastors. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. God has made a way where many times we, we have seen no way. Yes. And uh, I, I stand amazed that I, as I drive up here many times to this place and thinking about that there was a dream and there was an impression that I felt and it was, it was strong. And even when Kim and I married, we just celebrated October, the first weekend of October the 3rd. We celebrated 30 years together. And one of the things I remember asking her, I says, I know that God has called me to pastor a church. 
And I said, I just have to ask the question. I don't know if you would want to be a pastor's wife. But even back then, 30 years ago, and there were things then that followed the prophecies. Despise not prophecies, it says. And so there was a prophecy in my life that said that, that uh, a man in the church, uh, Frank Brocato, Frank Brocato came to at the church that we were at. And he was up speaking. He was there as a businessman and, and letting them know what the business group were doing for the churches and appreciation of pastors, just like you're doing today. And we say, thank you so much. And they would appreciate these ministries, and they would do special things of dinners and such. And, and he was there, just spoke for just a few minutes. And, and, and I was standing at the pulpit. I was doing praise and worship the church that we were in. And, and so we just paused for a minute, and they, they had him just speak, just greet the people. And, and he turned around, and he pointed at me, and he says, and he's going to be a pastor too. And I had already spoken many times and heard the prophecy years ago that we would build a church and a cow pasture. This used to be a cow pasture. And that all of that would come to fruition, that God would complete all of that. And we're just in the portions and the steps of what he is doing. And so as you appreciate us, let me say that I appreciate Kim sticking with me, being willing to say that she would, she would be the wife of a pastor. Not that it's going to be understood or perfect every day and we'll get it all right, but we're, 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 uh, we're forgiven by the great and mighty God of the universe. And as we go and we try things or make mistakes that we said, Lord, okay, I didn't get quite hear you right or get it right, but thanking him always. And we've come a long ways, and God has fulfilled many prophecies. If, if I were to be writing a book like the Bible has prophecies in it, and you'll see a star, and it's hollow in the center, but if you see it blackened in, that means it's complete. God is still completing even the prophecies of your life. And if God uses us in any way and we help fulfill that, those at home or those that are here, if we share a message to know that God is never wrong. And I asked that man after church, uh, Frank, and I said, Frank, why did you say that? I would already knew that there was that God had spoke to me, and I already knew that. And, and he said, you know, he says, uh, maybe I was wrong. And he says, I, I, I really got afraid after I said it. He said, I'm not sure why I said it. And he says, he says, I apologize if I, if I said something wrong. He said, I said, no, you were on track. I said, you heard God. He says, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know why I did that, and I got afraid after I said it. Let God use you. Let him speak to you. And just as he has us, this that you see here, it's all a byproduct of him speaking to us, working in us, just as he is you. God bless you. Thank you for your kindness to us today, and thank you for the cards and, and such. And we love y'all. Love y'all, each of you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Praise God. I'm so glad that God loved us first. <laughs> thank y'all so much. Blessings to you. Uh, it was, um, it was, it was hard keeping a secret from those guys. <laughs> We've been been trying to plan this thing, of, you know, around the corners, and so and all of a sudden they'd walk up and you go, ah, how are you doing? and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so if you heard us talking about something weird, <laughs> that's what happened. You just you you snuck up on us. But I want to encourage those of you that are watching uh, online, put a comment. If you want to say, hey, we love, we love our pastors or whatever, we love you, please do. Please do. Just, uh, uh, I, I think that would encourage them as well. Amen? All right. Now, you know what time it is, right? Huh? Does everybody know what time it is? God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. Oh, God is going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Oh, devil, get out of my way. Because God's going to get my praise. Well, Jesus crushed the enemy. Devil, you're underneath 
my feet marching out in victory. Oh, hallelujah, I am free. Oh, Jesus, crush the enemy. Devil, you're underneath my feet marching out in victory. Hallelujah. Come on, sing that again. Jesus, crush the enemy. Devil, you're underneath my feet. Marching out in victory. Oh, hallelujah. I am free. Oh, God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's going to get my Whoa. God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's gonna get my praise. Right now, I want somebody to just give us a word or two of praise this morning. Let God get your praise. The devil is wanting you to keep quiet. The devil is trying to beat you down. But today, you get a chance to say, no, 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 no. No, God's gonna get my praise. God's going, devil, you're not, you're not, these people are not going to hear me talking about my ailments. These people are going to hear me talking about my God and how big he is. So somebody want to share? Just, you can shout out one word. You can say healed or delivered or whatever, but just. There you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. My God's going to get my praise. Oh, God's going to get my praise. God's going to get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's going to get my praise. Cause Jesus crushed the enemy. Devil, you're underneath my feet. I'm marching out in victory. Hallelujah. I am. Come on. Jesus crushed the enemy. Devil, you're underneath my feet. I'm marching out in victory. Oh, hallelujah. I am free. Cause God is going to get my praise. God is going to get my praise. Devil, get out of the way. My God's gonna get worse. God's gonna get my praise. God's gonna get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's gonna get my praise. Hallelujah! Thank We're free this morning, Lord. We worship you and we praise you, Father. Yes. Lord God, we give you glory, we give you honor. Hallelujah. 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 There's a there's a term that says Talet Elohim. Talet Elohim. And that means Lamb of God. And he is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord, you're so worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, Lord. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. 
Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Lord, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. Worthy of every song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Lord, show me who you are and fill me with your heart. faithfulness has walked beside me the winter storms may wait for spring in every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment, Lord, all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak, that fear may come, but fear will lead. Yes, Lord, you lead my heart in victory. You are my strength and you always will be. 
I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, yes, Lord, all over my life, everywhere I look, Lord. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sins are rolled away. Because of you, oh Jesus, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sins are rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life, you said to you, Lord. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see the evidence. I see the evidence of your goodness. Oh, it's all over my life. Thank you, Lord. All over my life. Mm. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. So why should I fear for oh, the evidence is here? Yes, it is, Lord. Why should I fear for oh, the evidence? Is he? Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over my life. Thank you, Lord. And I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life. All over my life. One more time, I see the evidence. I see the evidence of your goodness. It's all over my life. All over my life. Oh. And I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life. All over my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the evidence in our lives, Father, that you prove to us, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. For I've tasted and seen of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and feel the act must fear your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome yes you are lord come flood this place 
grace and fill me oh every heart here your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence oh tasted and seen for I've tasted and seen how the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here. Yes, Lord. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord. It's your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. There's so much love in your presence, Lord. More than, more than, Lord, there's so much. There's so much. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love your presence, Lord. In 
your presence where healing begins. In your presence is where I want to be. In your presence, Lord, that's right where I want to be. At your feet, oh Lord, in your presence, Lord, there's strength. All the strength that I need to get through in your presence, where healing begins. Oh, yes, in your presence is what I want to be. Oh, your presence, in your presence is what I want to be. In your presence is a strength for me. In your presence, where healing begins. In your presence is where I want to be. And I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Yes, Lord. Oh, I want to be, be more, more like you. Go oh, make it yes, your prayer, Lord. Lord. I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. In your presence is where I want to be. In your presence is the strength, Lord, that I need. In your presence, the healing begins. In your presence is where I want to be. feel it. It's coming down from our Father above. Oh, yes, Lord, sweep over my spirit forever I pray. In fathomless billows of love Oh, it's peace, peace, it's wonderful peace, it comes down from our Father above. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, oh, sweet, sweet Lord.
Just tell him I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. Sing it to him. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. We rejoice. Rejoice. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all so much.
praise his holy name. God richly bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see that there's others have come in this morning. Thank you. We have uh, Juanita with us this morning. God bless you. And how, where, where's uh, where's uh, Darcy? Alabama. Okay. He's, he's working for the Lord. Hallelujah. He's probably up there singing, working on a building. <laughs> that old song we used to sing years ago, working on a building. The Bible says that we are the temple, we're the building, and he resides within us. So good to see you this morning, and we're so good, and so glad to have Albert with us today, and Albert has been really uh, suffering with some problems, and but God has strengthened him. He was at Shema Monday night, this past Monday. I'll reflect on that in just a moment, And but anyway, we're glad that he's here. We're glad that Miss Megan is. I'm just seeing her grow here lately. I love you, Megan. You're special to the kingdom of God. Know that, honey. That Lord loves you. And she's just, she's just walking in victory. And I, and I praise the Lord for that. So good to see Willie this morning and Noel. God bless you. And uh, they're, they're here quite often. They're ministering sometimes. And, and most of the time, I think, and even when they're under the shade tree and somebody comes by, I think they're still ministering. And uh, I talk about instant in season and out. I, I believe they are continually. And uh, God bless you. There's so much happening in your country and, and such where you're from. And, and I know that God is, is, is working on your behalf and hearing your prayers. Would you all come forward for just a minute and give just a praise testimony? Both of you come up here. Stand down here in the front. I'll give you this microphone. And you all just share for just a minute. And just, just share with you how we can join you and that that's going on in your country. And tell us where you were from and, and what's happening. And I'll let y'all decide who's first. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Danny. I'm so glad to be here this morning among you, God's people. And uh, I'm from Haiti. My country uh, is like everybody knows in trouble. A lot of trouble. But our God is always good. He's always good. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in the mic. mic. But hey, we hear. And uh, we always happy to be with you all here. I want you all to hear that. And uh, balance. A lot of money. Last time, uh, I received a call. My uh, sister-in-law told me they kidnapped his, her cousin, and they asked three hundred thousand U.S. dollars to relocate. I joined with Willie and friends. We called. We orders. We were praying that night. We asked God to release him without no money, because we didn't know we didn't have no money, no money at all. They kept his car, and they released him in the morning. We were praying at night. They received him without no money. Oh yes, our God is great. He is great. He is good all the time. So, um, you know, I'm a but I don't Praise the Lord. All, all glory to God. Good morning, folks. And um, I'm happy to be with you. I can't wait for you to stay with you. When we're not here, Especially Pastor Downey, this shepherd, he is really a good shepherd. <laughs> we bless the Lord for him. And, um, 
Well, it is in the news, but since most people already uh, familiar with the fact that Haiti is a poor country, every place has what you call a, a story. Every place has a story until you learn about why any country or any people uh, in, in such condition presently, you have to know why. But um, uh, all I can say right now is because we have chaos and bandits all over the place, many groups, each one of them want to be the one to decide how the country should be run over. So I, in this manner, we wanted to have somebody who can actually gather everybody together and so we can come to a, a consensus and then decide what to do. But as it is right now, nothing is happening. Nobody wants to make any accord. Nobody wants to do anything except everybody's keeping their own little turf, territory. See. So what we're asking is that the Lord can do um, a miracle in Haiti right now just to show people that even the, the most uh, secluded place where people don't even think about uh, the Lord working there because I heard a lot of people say it is a country where they do voodoo, they do other things like that. However, we from that country and we know a lot of other people who love the Lord down there. And no matter what, we're going to be more than conquerors, okay? So we, we're, going to, we, we're going to do that. So, and that's why we're still holding on tightly with, with Jesus. He is in the boat. He's in our boat. And it doesn't matter about the, 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 the when, when, when you see the, 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 the sea, the raw sea, and then as we can see now, the clouds rolling, thunders and everything like that, and we look down, we see him in the boat, and we say, we're going to be safe because he knows the right port to get us. So he's driving. He is, he is in control. The country it will be moving forward. It, it says when it's going to be, uh, when you see it's the darkest, that's when it's going to be the brightest because at, at the other turn, the other side of it, the Lord will appear. And that's what we're looking for right now. My wife and I, we have uh, a few people, uh, we pray over the phone with them. We have a little uh, meeting, uh, maybe two, three times. And we always in worship because I heard the Lord said to me clearly, less prayer, more worship. Less prayer, more worship. I could not understand it. When I realized and I did some reading, I found out the Lord lives. He's happy among people who are giving him praise and glory, joy. Every time I come here, I see him up here. I see the pastor here. I say, I can hear the word in time. And mostly that when you go to heaven, you're not going to hear the word. He is the word already. So it's the praises he's going to want. That's why. So we better learn how to be worshipers down here than run after words. You know? <laughs> so... It's that sometimes when, you, when you're in a big, uh, in difficult situation or in an accident or something, the only thing you can say, Jesus save me. It's no long prayer or anything like that. But if you remember a little song, you can give him praise and glory in the most difficult situation. So what I'm asking myself is that uh, what can I offer these people down there? Because right now they are in need of water and food. I can't understand food. But I don't understand water. It is an island. We are on water. I know we cannot drink the salt water, but we have ways of, of processing the, the, the water and get it. The thing is that everything they're doing now, they rely on, um, on machinery that will run with uh, uh, gasoline. And gasoline uh, come to the island two or three times a year, um, a month. Is who will be doing the distribution. That's what's happening now. Can you imagine somebody making $12 million every month? Cash, doing nothing. 
buys it at four dollars, they sell it at twelve or ten dollars. And not only that, sometimes they don't sell it at the pump. They give it to other people who put it in drums and go over, over different places and sell it any price they want. How much is a gallon of water? Let me see this now. I think it's five dollars or something like that. I think it's five dollars. Five U.S. dollars for a gallon of water. Thirty-five cents at Walmart or thirty-eight cents at Walmart. My God! I mean, this we need prayer. And I said, we don't need prayer for Haiti. We need prayer for the people because Haiti is still flourishing. Haiti still has all the elements, sun, uh, water, uh, the, the earth is good. Everything is okay except the people running it. <laughs> so we need to pray for the people to get the mind to be changed so we can understand that hate. And then they have this, this um, uh, legacy that they think. See, that's why when you start uh, with with an error at the uh, uh, on the top, if you if you if you if you don't change somewhere in the middle, the result will be erroneous. Also, it will be an error because you have error at the top. So they told them their independence was given to them by voodoo and other stuff like that, instead of them making a decision that they will they, they will not live in in slavery anymore. So instead of that, they give the praise and glory to a different god. And that God is the God that enslaves. It doesn't free people. The devil doesn't free. The devil doesn't come to, uh, to, to give you joy. And no, he comes to destroy, to kill. And that's what he does. So if you don't change your mind, if you don't uh, turn around and look for the right God. Uh, Paul was um, with the, um, uh, the Athenians and other people. Uh, with him. He was giving them compliment about that. They look like a religious uh, group of people who have all kinds of gods. And he said, but I see you even leave a spot, empty spot for an unknown God. And he said, you know what? That's the God you need to know, the unknown God, not the ones that you have. Because they're all pieces of wood. They're all stones and stuff like that. He said, that God you don't see, he's the one running your life, running the whole world. So I know my God is in Haiti. He's just waiting for the people to change their mind and to come to him. When I say that, I really believe that, hey, he has his people everywhere. And he said he's, he will collect them. He will call them, appealing to them. And then just like Abraham dealt with God, would you destroy the, the, the land if you find 50 people? Then 40, then 30, then 20. My wife and myself and a few other people, we bargaining. Ten, at least ten people in the country, and we're asking, Lord, would you let Haiti be destroyed if you find ten people who worship you, Lord? We know Haiti will revive again because there are more than ten people over there <laughs> watching God. There are a bunch of people there who cannot even leave their home. Who cannot even leave their home. They are prisoners in a way. Um, two days ago, or something like that, the United States flew two big planes over there with two tanker of gasoline. You know, our people, we have seals. We have special. Are you telling me you're giving up to the bandit? You even brought two tanker of gasoline to the em em ambassador over there. And yet the people cannot find one gallon of gas because you say there are gangs holding the port. My goodness. It's a matter of money. That's why I'm praying for you guys to be prayer. And then ask that God will change everybody else's mind. All countries. And then pray for a miracle in Haiti. And show how these people are of people who really know how to welcome people. Of people who really in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come into agreement, Lord, with William and with Noel, Father God, in regard to their home country of Haiti, Father. 
Lord, you, Lord God, are stronger than if they combined every one of the demons around the world and put the uh, Satan right on top of the whole pile. It still won't even come close to who you are and the power that you have. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're speaking forth, Lord God. Lord, your church, you've got a church still in Haiti. There's a church there. There's a, there's a remnant there, Father God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, I pray that you would, there, would be, there would be a covering, Lord God, over them, Father. Lord, your divine protection, your divine anointing, Lord God, all, yes, leading them, Father, to the victory that Jesus paid for, Father. Lord, Jesus, didn't, he, Jesus did not die and give and sacrifice himself for a tie or a loss. Jesus did it for victory. And Jesus wants us to walk in that same victory, not settle for a tie, not settle for a loss. So we're coming into agreement with them that there's victory coming. Lord God, there's already victory being stirred up, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you for it. Lord, I pray peace will be upon Lord Noel and, and upon Willie, Father, and their family, Lord God, and all of their friends, all those people that are there under that bondage, Father, in the name of Jesus. But, Lord, we pray for those, those, uh, those rebel leaders, Father. We pray that, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will sweep over Haiti and that those people will be brought into conviction to choose, Lord God, to be reconciled with you or to continue on where they're going. But, Lord, we pray for them as well, Lord God. We pray that, Lord God, that they, Lord God, will come to know Jesus Christ and be reconciled to you, Father. So, Lord, we're praying for all that. But, Lord, I just I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you would be with us. And, I, and, 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 Lord, that well, we know that you are. We don't have to pray and ask you something we already know. Lord, and your word tells us that if two or three gather in your name, you're with us. So right now, Lord, you're with us, Father. And as we walk in relationship with you, you're with me. You're with each one of us, Father. And we thank you for that, Lord. May we rest in that fullness and completeness. Yes, Lord God, and trust, faith, trust, faith, trust, faith, more than enough. Father, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you. Blessings now. Blessings, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Give God praise this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Uh, the country of Haiti is like many other countries. Uh, they, they have a lot of rebels and different ones that are leading that. I know of a, a three-fold three cord ministries out of Tampa and a friend of ours named Brent. And, and uh, they talk about when they, we would give something or put it into a container and it would be sent to Haiti or Dominican Republic or some of these other places and some of the islands that when it goes in there, you can send it and you have to pay to ship it to get it there. But then when you get it there, for them to turn it loose, those that are the rebels that are in control or, or those that are part of gangs or whatever you want to term it, those that are the unrighteous, let me just simplify it, and there's a, that umbrella covers all of those that are not godly. And so I could give you all the names that go along with them, and we could call the names of the different groups and whatever or, or the uh, uh, different clans or teams or, or whatever they are, or, uh, gangs that are in New York or wherever they may be, and they want to control, and then they, there's a, like a, a duty to be paid to get it to, to release it out of the harbor. And those type things just set another cost on top of, of what it was to ship it. And those controls need to be broken. And those type things are, are unjust. The Bible says when the, when the just are in power that the people prosper and things are good, there's peace there. But when the ungodly are, are running a country or, or a community or wherever it may be, that there's unrest and the peace is broken, the righteous have to stand up to allow God the opportunity to break that, that bond, break that yoke of bondage, and, and set those people free. Hallelujah. But what's interesting, even in the middle of bondage, those that we read about in the Scripture that were that were bound or whether they were in the lion's den or, or whether it was Paul and Silas or whoever it may have been. It says that when they were free, even though they were in chains, they were free. Hallelujah. He said, those that I've set free are free indeed, every part of their life. And so those people may be in that country where that's going on. But I say to you today that as they've given their lives and live for God, that they are free even though it looks like bondage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you all again so much. And uh, Noel's going to have to sing for us again sometime soon. Today, I, I know I'm getting late here in time, and, 
and I had heard y'all say that there was going to be some food and, and to join us. And, and if you didn't come prepared and you don't have somewhere to go, they tell me there's plenty of food, and I'm sure there is, there always is. So, so please stay and have a lunch with us today. And Juanita, I didn't, uh, didn't know you were coming, and I didn't know they were fixing lunch either, but I appreciate your, your recognizing Kim and I as pastors of Friends and Family Church and the Appreciation Sunday. Thank you so much. It, it means so much to us just just to have the opportunity. What gives me the authority to, to speak? Why not you be in charge? Why not listen to you? And we don't have authority or power. We have love. Let that melt in real deep. I don't have a position or a title. I should be having love to walk humbly, the word says. And so as Kim and I minister, I pray that we would continue to walk as ministers that God calls humbly before him and each of you. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow some of the things I get hot and tired or hungry or whatever and I slam the door. Don't follow me like, but follow me when I'm, I'm walking in the spirit and, and, and the things of God or walk in that, but ignore those other things that may rise up in my flesh. Hallelujah. So I praise God and, and thank him for the opportunity that he's given us here and uh, that, that he's given us a vision. What happens if you don't have a vision? The Bible says the people perish for lack of vision. So I encourage you in your life, in your family, set a vision, set some goals, and just work toward it and smile and love each other all the way there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I spoke to you last week, and I'm going to share just a little bit. I won't keep you too long, and since we do have lunch here and there's no lines to wait in, maybe I can go a few minutes extra. But I think the Lord has, has set a, a order today for the service. I spoke to you about walking in the Spirit last week. I want to conclude. I couldn't bring you all of that. And there were some other things I wanted to share. But as I open the service today with Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and Ashley maybe can put that back on the uh, overhead, the monitors for us here. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And let me share with you right quick also that this same passage of Scripture, or something similar to it, it's not written exact the same words, but if you were to go to 1 Thessalonians 2.12, you'll find almost the same words. It's talking about the way we walk, and we walk worthy of God. His calling, His measure. And I, I want you today to know that many people, in the things they do, in the outward giving, and they, they, they are a people with a, a, an appearance of godliness, but they sometimes miss the mark in trying to set an a avenue or set a path or to build a, a, a community uh, opinion of who they are. And they do certain things to create an outward appearance. The Bible says that in some of the scriptures that it talks about inside, that they are as a, as a sepulcher or that they're, they're not clean inside. And so the Bible teaches us that there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. So the way that we walk, and if I can somehow today, with all the meekness and compassion, share with you that God wants us to walk in a way that expresses Him. Who was our example? His Son. God, through His Son, God said, uh, uh, it says, uh, I in him, and he in me, and you in me also. That sounds a little complicated, the circle there. But God is saying that basically that he is there, and Jesus gives him the honor and glory and recognizes where the power comes from. Let all glory and honor and power. Jesus himself, he even told somebody, they called him good master. He says, there is none. Jesus said this, and he said, there's none good except for the Father. So where's the benchmark? Jesus himself gave honor to the Father and that in our lives and the things that we do and the way that we walk, we should be bringing honor. Uh, I was at home, uh, what was it, Thursday night, I think it was, and there was a, I get one of those, I had come in, I'd worked, I had uh, raked up around the house, I had three trailer loads of, of debris out of our yard that I had kind of went to the 
a fellowship cemetery and worked the week before. And so this week I was looking for a window to get back into cleaning up under our oak trees and things. I, and I only raked up the yard area, not in the pasture area out around it. But I had, uh, I've got a 5 by 10 trailer. I stacked it up three times six feet high and hauled it out back to a burn pile that we had. So with that said, I, work, I was tired, and I get one of those calls, and, and it's coming in. It doesn't say that this could be spam, but it just that one of those numbers I don't recognize, and so I answer it. And here lately, I've got to where uh, I'm getting so many calls that will be on my, my personal phone. I, get, I have two numbers in this phone. One is the church number, and the other one's my, my primary number, my personal number. And so it'll come up with a P on it if it's a primary, and it'll come up with an S if it's the church, the secondary number. And so, but I just answer them all, friends and family church, Pastor Donnie, can I help you? And, and, and it said, it, the pause, and, and the man says, well, I, I thought I was calling a residence. I said, you did. But you also called the pastor, friends and family churches, who I am. And I says, uh, how can I help you? Is there something I can, you know, pray with you? What, what, what is the need? He said, well, I'm with the solar, and he started then with the sales pitch. And he went on for just a little bit, and he took a breath, and I said, excuse me just a second. I said, but I'm really not interested in the solar. I have done some research and looked at some of that, and I said, it may become later in the in future that I might would do something like that. But I said, I'm not ready to do anything like that, but I really appreciate your call. And he says, well, I don't know if he was challenging me or what, but I'm tired. I had done all of that work that day, and I, I was sitting here. I had just taken my shoes off. I'm getting ready to go to the shower. It's like 7 o'clock at night. And so I'm tired. I'm a little bit, you know, uh, weak in, in, in my ability to, to, you know, prolong at going through and getting something to eat. And, and so those kind of things could have taken over. But I'm thankful that God gave me the opportunity. And I don't know if this salesman, he says, well, as a pastor, he says, do you have a favorite scripture? I'm like, I'm, this is a solar uh, salesman, and he's asking me about my relationship with something I proclaim. And I said, and I said, well, you know, I, I can answer your question, and I can tell you what I, I kind of lean toward. But you know, I listen to the subject of, of what's going on, and I says, and about a certain subject, I would have a favorite scripture that applies to it. And I said, so I may have several different scriptures. And I said, so uh, without having a, a direction or a subject for my favorite scripture, I said, I could share one with you that I really like. But, and I said, but I think they're all precious. And so as I did that, he says, well, 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 share one with me. And I said, Isaiah 12, 2, 3, and 4. I didn't even have to go get a book. I didn't have to thumb through my phone. I had read it, and I had put it in my heart as I was walking that day in a situation of being tired, frustrated, ready to, to, to go and get a shower and rest a little bit, prop my feet up. And I said, Isaiah 12, 2, 3, and 4, Behold, for God is my salvation. I will trust and never be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, even at this moment, I'm ready to go do other things, and my song has also become my salvation. I'm trusting in it. Therefore, with joy shall I draw water out of the wells of salvation. One water, many wells, churches, many churches, but one Christ, one salvation, one way to glory. Jesus said, there is no other way except through me. I will draw water out of the wells of salvation. In that day shall I say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. And let us make mention that his name is exalted. He said, oh, I'm so glad I called you. He, says, he said, I have a favorite scripture. I said, well, tell me what it is. And he shared with me out of John. And, and I said, glory to God. I said, I, I never in the world would have thought a, a, a solar salesman would want to rejoice with me for a moment. But you never know unless you give an opportunity. I could have said, well, I'm not interested in what you're selling. I know about solar. I could have been mean-spirited. I could have done a lot of things. But God gave me an opportunity to share with someone I didn't know. After I hung up, Kim says, who in the world was that? I said, 1-800-CHAINSAW. I preached that a couple of weeks ago. You don't ever, ever know who you're calling that you may find out that they need you to pray for them just like we did with Willie and Noel about Haiti. 
We may be in need to agree with our brothers we, we, and sisters. We may need to take a moment out of our day and walk like Christ would. Somebody touched me, Jesus said. But the disciples looked at him like, Lord, there's a lot of people touch you. Not like that. Not like that. It's like I told Johnny before service. This is not even my sermon. Oh, Jesus. But I, I was speaking with Johnny before service today. And I said many times we become mechanical and, and unsensitive in the way that we, we live, even as, as Christians. And I said, it's, and I gave the example. I was like, I, I go over my, my, one of my children or close by or grandchildren. And I says, come over here and tell me that you love me. And they would come over and say, well, I love you, Grandpa, or something like that. But isn't it so much more precious when that child walks up to you, says, Grandma, Grandpa, I love you so much. And when they do it out of a voluntary spirit, you know that it had a different effect than that that you had to ask for. God is a gentleman through His Holy Spirit, and He wants you to commune with Him. He wants you to come to Him and say, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Let my soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let me be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears, Lord. Don't have to ask me to come and tell you I love you. Lord, I want to walk to you, and I want to just, out of appreciation, and say, I love you. I love you, Lord. My appreciation Sunday to you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice unto you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But in this scripture, in the fourth chapter, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Think about the the picture that just painted. You came voluntarily, not having been asked to be a prisoner, but serving and willing and lovingly being even a prisoner. Think about it. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with with which you were called. How do you do that? Verse 2, fourth chapter, Ephesians, with all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering and bearing one with another in love. That you can minister to the solar salesman that you can minister when you're in line and everything's going the wrong way and they charge you the wrong price. That you can minister as you walk. Verse 1, chapter 4, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. Are we today understanding the opportunity to walk worthy of God's calling? Verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. I believe that the Holy Spirit is in you. I believe that God's power is in you. And I believe that we are living in an opportunity-type day like never before. How many times back in the early 1900s did you get a phone call while you were outside working? <laughs> and that you could minister while your hands are working. That while you're in the midst of other things, that you, what, what opportunity? Jesus says greater things than you. I think sometimes we're looking for so the miracles or something. We're doing some things that God, through his son, even Jesus, except the Holy Spirit, put it in somebody's heart. 
and speak to them 1-800-GOD, then they're, they're not having any communion. They're not having any conversations. But today you can call and check on your chainsaw and find out the man just lost his son and he's just helped you to resolve a problem at home in troubleshooting. And you can pray with him before you hang up. Let's not this week, let's proclaim. I won't just say I'm going to pray for you. As that need comes up and as you walk away from that person that you're ministering to, say, can I pray with you now? Can I pray with you? Can I share with you? I'm going to share nine things with you, and then I'm going to wind it down. I'm not going to go into the depth of what I had for you today. Let me share two things, and then I'll come back to this. Just just simple things. Charles Spurgeon wrote something. He said, preaching ought to be a joy. And yet, it may become a task. Ministering, being a servant of the Lord. You say, well, I, I, it, it's like work to me. Then it's not in the right measure. If Charles Spurgeon wrote this. He said, preaching ought to be a joy, and yet it may become a task. Constant preaching should be constant enjoyment. You're all able ministers. You have a message. You can, you, can, you can minister. You say, well, I don't have a title as a preacher. You are sharing the gospel. Uh, uh, how beautiful are the feet of those that share the gospel and bring what? Good news. And that's who you are. Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote this. I might have entered the ministry if certain clergymen I know had not looked and acted so much like undertakers. <laughs> and I thought that was interesting. Oliver Winter Holmes says, I might have become a minister or a pastor, but the example that I was being given, I didn't want to be like that. I know someone that had been, for many years, I've been seeing even since Facebook, and I would look at their, their friendship page would come up that sometimes as a recommended person that you might have worn, and they looked like they were up from the funeral home. And the things that they, they did. And, and I'm, I'm saying to you today, we don't have to put on an appearance of, of a, a shirt and a tie and, and the outward appearance that man looks upon, but the heart of who you are. And the man that, that was talking with me from the uh, solar place and the man on the phone when I talked to the 1-800 chainsaw when I found out about his son, they, I couldn't see what he was wearing. I couldn't see his face. I don't know if he was short, tall, or, or what he was, but, but I knew that he had a need. And Jesus says himself, that he doesn't look upon the outward appearance. God doesn't, but he looks upon the heart of man. And when I heard that message from that man's heart, the one that asked me that was selling solar, that was ready. I was ready to say, you know, yes, I can share. I don't have to go grab my Bible and look up the book and chapter. It was so important to me that I memorized it. How did you memorize it, brother? I took a three-by-five card back in the 80s. And I had a 1970 Volkswagen, <laughs> and I put that three by five card on the dash. It was 55 minutes from Ruskin to Bartow, and I would, as I'm driving along, I would look at that scripture. As I looked out through the windshield, and I was riding this lonely road of 674, which is not as lonely as it used to be. It's, it's got a lot more traffic today, but I would look at that three by five card, and I'd say, and that's when it began to well up within me that. Behold, God is my salvation personally. It wasn't just a, a word out of Isaiah, but it became life to me. It became real to me. And I memorized it as I would drive back and forth. And many times in memorizing, I would only get just a few sentences into it, and tears would well up in my eyes as I memorized it. And so I didn't just find the word. It says, I, the Bible teaches us, I found your words, and I ate them. Your words became for me a joy. And I will rejoice in you, Lord, because you're doing great and mighty things in what you say to me. But these men coined that. Let me give you these nine things, and as I said, I'm going to wind this down. The church today is not much different than the church of the time of Christ, and after he was crucified, he ascended to glory, gave a great commission to all of us to go into all the world, all the earth, and, and preach the gospel. But he had problems in the things of the church 
I want you to listen to these nine accounts. I'll give you a verse, and you can just put a little short note with them. I just put one, then I abbreviated chapter for CH. But in the first, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were to go to Thessalonians, it's where this would be found. Second chapter. Some of the things that Paul dealt with. In chapter 1 through 4, there was division in the church. Does that sound familiar? The second item in chapter 5, there was immorality in the church. Sound familiar? In chapter 6, there was the law in the courts and how it affected the church, taking their brothers to, you know, before the judge and such. These are things that Paul dealt with in his time, just recent, right after the uh, crucifixion of Christ. Chapter 7, Christian marriage. Had to speak into it, deal with it. Some of the things that were being done that were being uh, taught were, were not God's plan. Chapters 8 through 10, on meat that was offered to idols. They had to clear that up. In chapter 11, the sixth item, the head coverings were, became a contention. Who should wear a head covering? Who shouldn't wear a head covering? Interesting that they would spend time on that. Chapters 12 through 14, the spiritual gifts in the church. You get a chance this week, look at these things. Number eight, in chapter 15, the doctrine of resurrection. Wow, I thought, you know, that that should have been simple, cut, and dried. And I'm going to share a story with that will explain what I just read to you, the doctrine of the resurrection. Item nine. Chapter 16, and Paul in the collection of his personal notes and getting it in order that it should be preached and taught in, a, in a, a way that would be of edification and building up the church. I'll tell you this quick story and then I'll close. As I was working in last week, the week not this week that we're in right now but, or last week, but anyway, the week before when I was at Fellowship Cemetery, and I was trying to help with the tree removal and all those, and headstones had been turned up because of fallen trees. And we took out over 30 trees, and some of those were major uh, large trees that were hollowed out in the center, had become decayed, and, and they were just problems. So we, while we had a, a team there for four days of tree, uh, that's what they did for a living was cut and, and uh, remove trees. As we went through the cleanup of that, and we had a roof being restored, and we had then the electric being put back onto the pump. That, that was a separate meter for it. And the storm, Hurricane uh, uh, Ian had, uh, had torn it down. Or Ian, I should have said. I is an E. But anyway, in, in Hurricane Ian. And it was interesting, all this work's going on. And I had a gentleman show up at the cemetery, and it had been segmented on Channel 13 that there was a need for those who could volunteer and things that you might do. And I had a man representing a church. I won't tell you what denomination or anything. That part's not important. But it's just like the things that Paul dealt with in his day. And so many things today that we don't have a focus on how to pray and how to lift up. And as this gentleman came to me and, and he says, what is it we could do from our denomination, from our church. And I said, well, maybe I could just share with you the things that are left to be done, like pressure washing the buildings. We would like to even go and maybe someone could volunteer to come and we would buy the paint or something and somebody that has the equipment could spray the buildings for us and we could tape them off or help. And the things like, and so I named them all off. We wanted to uh, do pressure washing. We wanted to do some painting. And there were some other little uh, odds and ends. And so I, I listed them off. And I said, now, any of those that you would want to go back to your, your fellowship, 
and take to them. Maybe there's people in your church that would be ready to, to tackle that or volunteer some part of that. Maybe you know somebody that has a paint company, and they would volunteer the paint to refresh the buildings. I said, so those are the things that we're looking for. And, and he paused for a moment, and it was like shuffling his feet. And he says, well, maybe I could explain it this way. He says, the church that I'm a part of, and he gave me the name of that, and he says, we want to raise the community's awareness that we do good things. And I stood there and I wanted to be, you know, I could have, I could have been blunt and cold with him. And I said, you know, I would think in my abilities, I cannot improve you. I can't improve your children church in this community, the denomination you're a part, I can't improve any of that. But as you look into the scriptures that you use a lot of the same scriptures we do, that if you look into there and you start applying those things to the fullness, it's going to take a lot of time to build that integrity. But he who keeps his promises builds integrity. Maybe that's one of the only quotes I'll ever have in life. I told my son that. He was having a little trouble with keeping a promise. I said, he who builds, you can build integrity if you keep your promises. I said, as you read the word and teach that to the fullest and keep moving forward and every opportunity you have to do good, do that. It says, he who knows to do good and doeth it not, it's done to him. It's a sin. But to do it, to raise the standard and the community awareness of who you are as a church, I can't help you. God can. Individually, it's the same way. I can't help you. Paul was dealing with issues in the church today, in the community today, in our families today, in the government today. I could go on and on in every civic club I could think of, and every one of them have failures or things that need to be fixed or changed. But I say to you today, that God's a God of mercy. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and your standard will come up. And he said he will, he will provide everything for you. Seek first the kingdom of God. Don't seek a, an avenue to get your, your picture on the news that, look, this church, and, and we could raise the, the compliment to that denomination because they, they were a part, an active part of getting it done. It says for us not even to boast of ourselves, but to boast in others. Esteem others greater than yourself. Don't boast in yourself. Only boast, you can boast, boast in Christ. You know, you, and, and when, as you give me any accolade today, and I'll close with this, as appreciation to Kim and I as the pastors and ministers of this church today, let us boast in Christ. Let us have great appreciation because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't know me as me. You would know me as a person of the world trying to accomplish my own self. I would be pulling myself up by my own bootstraps. That's the person I would be. But I say to you today that let us not lift ourselves up. Let us not esteem ourselves, but let the Holy Spirit seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. He will add what to you? All things. And as Willie told me, and he shared with it a minute ago, and Johnny prayed, and he used it more than. And we're not just conquerors. There's two words before it says we're more than conquerors. It says we're more than. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than. Leave here today knowing the fellowship with Christ that's within you. You're not just enough to solve the problem. You're more than. So when you ask God to help you, and that salesman calls you that you can actually wind up sharing Scripture with them, and not let it be a wasted call, but continue to build up and edify no matter where they are, who they are. I don't know if, what, what color that man's skin was. I don't really care. I don't know what he was wearing. I don't really care. I know that he had a heart, and he was so excited that he had, he said, I'm so glad I called you. How many times do they hang up wishing they had never called us? Stand with me this morning. All the things that went on, so how do we deal with those issues? We take it to the Lord in prayer. We go to Him.
live for him? In 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, I'm just going to share this real brief, real quick. It's just the, this, just a, a port, part of those scriptures. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all evil. I leave you today with those words that God would minister to you and that you would hear those things of God, learn of those things of God, put a three-by-five card on the uh, a dash of your 1970 Volkswagen or whatever it is that you're driving and begin to take that opportunity. You're sitting in traffic and it's stop-and-go traffic. You can sit there and just memorize that, that scripture that you've thought about so long. You say, well, I really can't. Well, you need to work on it. You need to try it. And the more you do it, the better you'll become at it. I used to play the guitar in a, in a way that I'd take my fingers when I was first learning, and I would literally bend them with my right hand for my left, and I would make the chord that I needed to, then I would strum it. And it was awful. It really was. It didn't sound like on top of old Smokey. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was. But after a while, I could close my eyes, and I could walk with Christ. I didn't need to see, for he was a lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. And I knew which way to go. I knew how to step over. I knew how to go from one progression to another. And I began to adopt the things of God and his teaching. And I learned. So I tell you, be repetitious. Pray with me. Father, you know your people today, those that are at home watching. And we may have spoken to them in some way today that they can uh, begin to walk in the Spirit, that we could, we could share even in the, in the, the application, Lord, of, of how we carry ourselves and the way we express ourselves, that we would shine a light into every dark corner that would appear in our life. Lord, that we are, are the light, and we can carry it into those places that you would open opportunity and we ask that we would not pass them by out of our wit, or as I mentioned last week, to have our own wisdom, the own worldly prudence, Lord, that we would, we would be the kind of people that we would be self-wise and, and self-knowledgeable. But, Lord, let all of our wisdom be the beginning of salvation and coming to you. Let all that wisdom that you would give to us be in a precious, usable sense and not that of arrogance. Touch your people. Build your church. In this last day, Lord, you said, let us not be deceived over and over again in the Scriptures. And I pray that the people would hear your voice. And, Lord, when we settle that in our heart and we memorize those Scriptures that are so meaningful that we can draw waters out of the wells of salvation with joy, and we can come to you after we study that Word, and you won't have to coax us into coming, but we would say, Lord, I love you. Jesus, I need you. I thank you for where you brought me from, and I see the places where I could have been, but you've carried me through, and I thank you. And I just want you to know, Lord, that I appreciate leading me and loving me and not being asked to come and say it, but out of a pure heart, out of an appreciative heart, we say, Lord, we love you. And let this be Appreciation Sunday, and every Sunday be a Sunday of appreciation for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for touching your people. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. If there's one this morning says, I need prayer, would you come? I'm not going to uh, belabor this very long. Just if you would like to come this morning. Those of you that might have a prayer request that you're at home and you may send us a text this morning, go ahead and send us a text and we'll put that onto our prayer list that we pray every Wednesday evening. We come together just for that purpose. Send us that and we'll put it on one of the prayer requests. These are some of the ones that we have already that have been made. We write on the back of them, and, and when the Lord answers that prayer, let us know, hey, that that prayer that I requested is answered. If there's anyone like that today, if you'd want to come, those that are here and those that are want to send us a message, we appreciate it. We join with you in that prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, as we close this service today, we pray that you would go with us. Lead us by your Spirit. Lead us into all truth, Lord, and, and let us walk away from all unrighteousness. 
as we walk in the presence of who you are, Lord, that, that, we would, uh, that people would mistake us, Lord, uh, uh, continually for someone that they knew that, that, that had a, had, was a part of their family even, that they would recognize us in a good fashion, that they would look at us and let us not try to build up our, our, uh, our, our, who we are as a church in this community, but, Lord, let the, the works that we do of good things, let them speak for us through you and your power and your authority. Lord, not to do them that we would gain any glory or anything ourselves, but we, our reward would remain in heaven, that we would not receive the reward now, but we would receive that reward out of a humble spirit as we walk before you. We thank you now for going with us. Protect us. Be with our families. Lord, and let us endeavor to do good even when evil is present, as Paul said. And we thank you now that you would give us the strength and the power, for greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we trust you now, Lord, with all things in Jesus' precious name we pray. And I'll pray for the food also, Lord, that you would bless the food that we're about to partake of. I'd almost forgotten that. There's a food after service today, and we thank you for those that have prepared and labored over that meal. And we ask your special touch and blessings for them. We thank you now, Lord, for an opportunity and time to fellowship together, and we make ourselves available to you in the fullest measure. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you today. Hallelujah.